Hey, what up, everybody? So first of all, chat, everyone coming in, welcome. It's out of the YouTube because this might be immortalized in YouTube history. I think the Mango Zane Grand Finals from last uh, Smash Summit 11, don't ask why it's taking me up till the, the following weekend to, to, to do this, but whatever, I had a, I had a busy week. Uh, I think it was a ridiculously groundbreaking Grand Finals on several levels because one, these are the two, like someone asked, right? Last stream, someone asked me, hey, did you think this Grand Finals was better than um, Mango Zane from uh, Big House 2019, Big House 9? And I said, okay, so I think the hype was higher going into the set because one, Mango Zane. Right now, they are, they are, they have established themselves as like the two best players, left and notwithstanding. We have no idea where left and fits in the spectrum, but at least in terms of North America, two best players. They're the two best players. Um, they have a ridiculously cool rivalry right now. Mango came in through losers. In fact, he didn't even get into top eight through winners. He got into top eight through losers, so he was on a crazy losers tear. Uh, Zayn was playing really, really solid all tournament. He thirty one plup pretty convincingly to 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 take plup out in winners quarters. Uh, Zayn looked pretty unstoppable this tournament, and Mango's going Fox, which uh, you know no one's beaten Zayn with Fox uh, in in two three years at this point. So. Mango going Fox is groundbreaking. People were really, really interested in how the set was going to go for, like, many different reasons. Also, first offline event in a year and a half, biggest prize pool. Like, there were, like, many reasons why, just from a storyline perspective, this set was really, really just dope. So, coming to the set for that reason alone, I think everybody was kind of like, oh, this is going to be, like, like buckle in. This is going to be some shit. Zane didn't play as well in Grand Finals as Big House. Yeah, I think Zane uh, dropped the ball several times this set, as we're seeing. Uh, but you know, I here's basically what my what my plan is tonight is uh, Drug Fox made a video on the second set, which I want to watch. I want to, uh, as a Fox player myself, I'm extremely invigorated with the fact that Mango's bringing the Fox back to play matchups besides Puff, and I wanted to watch at least. The two FD games, because I think they are the 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 craziest part of the, the Grand Finals for sure was the two FD games. Mango winning back to back on FD. And then we're gonna go over to Drug Fox's video and check this out. Because he made a video uh just yesterday on how crazy is Mango versus Zane. Uh and, and this is only on the second set. But we're gonna start with uh game four of set one. And yeah, I just, we just got out. I mean, the first stock was really, really fast. Strange recovery here from Zane, as you can see, he preserved his double jump all the way to the bottom. He definitely could have upbeat onto the stage. Opted to go for the ledge, Mango edgehogs him, and it's it's a questionable decision because, yeah, if Marth upbeats under the stage here, you don't actually risk that much. If Fox goes for ledge hop drill, you can smash the eye out. If Fox goes for ledge hop up air at this percent, you can you can crouch tech that. You can hold down and tech that. Uh, it's not that big a deal. Fox isn't going to get like a huge punish. On the other hand, if you get edgehog, you obviously lose your stock. So, just from a risk reward perspective, kind of sketch decision making already. I wouldn't call that an SD because Mango did back air him off stage, but it's almost tantamount to an SD. Dying at thirty like that, it's like uh, not not the greatest. And then I wanted to call this out because you see how Mango runs into the the forward air and no punish. I really want to drill this in everybody's head. This is what this is what KJH was doing in 2018, and this is what every Fox is going to be doing in a year from now. Right here. See that? Let's watch it one more time. And of course he's picking FD to maximize his combo damage. Just don't give it to Marth for free. Marth doesn't have multi-hit moves coming down. He's got down air, but he's got to he's got to get if if he can get a tip or downer, but downer's got a lot more lag on it. You can turn a situation where right now it's very hard to get a punish. You'll see foxes, even very modern foxes, they go for dash dance grab on the forwarder. Tell me how many times you've seen Marth coming down on FD with the forwarder. The fox tries to perfectly dash dance grab Marth's forwarder. Marth lands with the forwarder, dash back, baits the grab, and then kills the fox. Tell me how many times you've seen that. Probably a lot, right? Back to the ground game. This was the, the Mango dash dance. Love this moment. Mango pushing Zane to the corner. Look at this. I, I do love this. Just look at Mango not doing a single move. Backing Zane to the corner. And Zane doesn't want to overshoot. Zane could do a... but So Zane's talked about this. Zane could do here, if he thinks Mango's going to go for one of these lasers, if he thinks Mango's going to dash back, he could come forward with a dash attack, or potentially he could come forward with a running forward smash. But it's risky. And Zane is the kind of player, I think the way Zane looks at the game, Mewtwo King probably would have, in fact. But the way Zane looks at the game, he doesn't want to, like, have to gamble. He wants to be, he wants to play a style that's going to consistently let him win. 
And so Zayn, I've I've heard him say he said he feels like when you know you know when Marth just does that fucking dash tag across the stage. Zayn says he thinks that when Marth does that, it's like the Marth player saying like please, like please let this hit, you know, please, please let this this dash tag connect with my opponent. And 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 I think the way Zayn is as a player, like he wants to be so good that like he doesn't need to make offensive reads like that that potentially you know because the the fox full hops. It's going to be a huge punish, right, on the Marth. So, so uh, Zayn would rather just kind of give up stage. And, I mean, it actually does work out. Because Mango does get this nair on the shield. And this is really good. But then the downer out of shield was really, really nice from Zayn. That could have been up smash. That was good. And doesn't get the second one. And that was fucking crazy. It's such a weird set because there's some really bad slop, but also some really amazing outplays. That was such a sick up air. Just threading the needle, dude. Look at this. Because forward air will wall this out, right? If Martha goes for a forwarder here, then there's no way the up air works. But he's like specifically hitting... Basically, he's hitting Mars' head. And he's also probably not even thinking Zane's going to throw out an aerial. Because when you're going for this, you're thinking they might continue to dash dance. Crazy, crazy up air. I think, uh, I think, so, my, I mean, my, you know, and I've said, I said this yesterday too. My thoughts on the matchup are basically like, I think Fox does a lot better than the memes and the, you know, the Leffen memes and, you know, the Fox, Fox Complainers Anonymous, uh, give the matchup credit for. I think it's like a, I think it's like a, ultimately, I actually think most matchups in Melee, like, or, okay, I should say not most matchups in Melee, because obviously there's bottom tiers that are pretty fucking bad. But, you know, most of the viable characters, I think, are pretty close to even matchups with each other, ultimately. Like, I think Fox Marth, like, you know, factoring into, like, account all of the stages in the game, I, I think the matchup ultimately ends up being close to, like, maybe 55-45. But I, I don't think it's, uh... I, I don't think it's not doable. I don't think, um... I, I, I do think it's... I think it's literally up for debate. Like, Mango says Fox beats Marth. I, I, I actually see... I see where it's coming from. I get it. Uh, but... Yeah, ultimately, like, and this was something that I heard first from Azusa, and I thought was really cool. Azusa, Peach player from NorCal, and he said to me all the way back in 2016, he was like, you know, and this was pertinent at the time because, um, you know, Armada, this was when Armada was switching to, it's 2016, this is whatever year Armada started switching to Fox, and there's a period where it looked like Armada was going to go all Fox. He was trying to go all, literally all Fox, he was trying to drop Peach for a while. And I asked Azusa, like, you know, is that affecting your outlook on Peach? And he was like, dude, you know, honestly, I, I really don't care. Because I think Melee is such a rich and, like, deep game and a complex game that ultimately it's 99% of the time it's about player, player to player. Like, if you're just better than somebody, you're going to win. And if you're just worse than somebody, you're going to lose most of the time. And it's, yeah, I mean, matchups are a thing, but I'm not at the level where... I, my Peach can be so much better before I start worrying about whether my character loses to Fox 6-4 or whatever. You know, it, it, like, it's not the kind of game, like, Melee is, there's so much more kind of meta to unearth, if that makes sense. There's so many more techniques that nobody's doing. That's, there's so much more um, spatial awareness that people are just starting to develop uh, that I, I think the people that say, oh, this matchup is lost cause... Uh, this, that, and the other, I think they're just kind of fundamentally misguided because Melee is way too complicated of a game to... I mean, you know, look, not telling you guys to go out there and pick up Roy, but Zayn, <laughs> right? Uh, like, Zayn was... <laughs> what? There, there were some ra ra online rankings where people were putting him in the top 20 with, with, you know, putting Don't Test Me in the top 20, right? Like, you, you literally can be so good at this game and so people people argue about matchup numbers and all this stuff. And like, I I think it's fun to talk about. Don't get me wrong. I think talking about matchup numbers and stuff is super fun. It's it's uh it's interesting to, to to kind of weigh you know one character versus the other in this situation, that situation, this stage or that stage. But I think people definitely let the memes get they give the memes too much power. If that makes sense. And uh, hacks money goes on the mic and smash them and it says 20xx fox is the only character and suddenly people are actually putting out tier lists where there's only one top tier and it's fox you know and then leffen goes on and leffen says marth beats fox super duper bad and then all of a sudden you know people think the matchup's unwinnable if you look at twitter you would think people thought the matchup was unwinnable uh i went on slippy unranked one time and i was messing around with sheik and marth and i played sheik against this fox player okay on slippy unranked and i grab and i literally was tech chasing so well this day i was Grabbing him and I was literally killing him off every single grab.
and I destroyed him two games in a row with Sheik. Perfect tech chases. And then I switched to Marth. I grab him once on his second stock of the game, and he rage quits and, and leaves. And I'm like, what? I, like, how are you, like, he's totally fine playing my Sheik, getting killed off every grab, right? Every grab. He's dying to every single, every single time I grab him, I'm killing him. And he's totally fine, chugging along. He gets grabbed one time by my Marth and just immediately quits. Because, like, he was just, you know, like, the, meme, the memes killed him. The memes got to him. He couldn't do it anymore. He got grabbed by Marth and tilted out of his fucking mind. Getting grabbed by Sheik, it's like he's not even looking at the screen. I'm like, dude, I'm literally killing you every time. In fact, my Sheik's punish game is probably better than my Marth's. But people just, they give the memes too much power. This is dumb spaghetti. This is so spaghetti right now. Not that, it's not that spaghetti though. This is like Mango and Zane spaghetti. You know, like players like, uh, okay, me, like when I'm in spaghetti mode, or you probably, or like fucking Chris Best versus Net1234. That's like the common man spaghetti. This is that, you know, Michelin star spaghetti. It's like, it's spaghetti, but it's like, it's pretty good spaghetti, you know? It's good, it's like al dente, and it's, uh, you know, they got a nice, like the sauce is, you know when the sauce kind of sticks to the noodles, you know? You know when you, you stir the spaghetti, and you pick it up, and the, the sauce is just like, it sticks to the noodles in a really nice way, and it's just like, oh, You know, this is that kind of spaghetti. This is good spaghetti. But don't get it twisted, it's still spaghetti, okay? It's not perfect play. Uh -oh. 41, 50, 53. Ah, what the fuck was that? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> Holy fuck. Uh, I want to, I want to, I want to also just kind of mention this edge guard right here. This shit was crazy. Bro, the presence of mine to go for the roll there? That was insane. He said that was the fastest Marth killer I've ever seen. That was so good. All right, set two. Let's go to the Drug Fox video. Now I want to hear what Drug Fox has to say about this. Those games, yeah, I think game two was pretty good. For, like, game one was, uh, I don't know what I'm saying, game, game four and five. Game one on FD, game two on FD. The first one I felt like was way more kind of, you know, there was like slop. Uh, there was some, you know, big, big drops, I think, from Zane's side. Game two, Mango just kind of beat the brakes off him. Or game five. I keep saying one and two. Game five. Right? Like, I thought there were, this game was actually like a lot of confidence, honestly, from Mango, which is crazy. Uh, Zane gets a kill here, goes up a stock, right? So Zane, you know, again, gets the lead. And then Mango just kind of starts playing extremely well. Okay, he missed an L cancel there. That, that was a little bit unfortunate. Oh, never mind. I forgot about that. How do we miss that? Yeah, well, this was pretty bad. <laughs> well, let's just say Mango played really good. It's a better story. Let's go on to the second set. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, okay, so fucking this SD was really bad, but it, I mean, you know, it still got even dub, and then Mango played really, really good this stock. And the next stock. That shit was crazy. That was a crazy edge guard. Nobody saw that shit coming. Least of all Zane. All right, I'm back. This 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 moment right here where, where Zane gets this kill. This was the uh this was the like okay, this was the snap back to reality right here. Mango like takes the set, he, he wins two games at FD. We're like, holy shit, Mango's doing it, oh my god. And then Zane just like does this. Already pretty cool This fucking fort. You guys know how hard this fort is to hit? On a side B right here? Start and he reacted. Bro, try doing this shit on Slippy. Already pretty cool the, bro. This shit's so hard to hit. Start. Zane is kind of owning him. Oh, great. Man. Holy okay, fuck. Nice by Zane. And Mega's probably going to take the stock. Oh, never mind. Worst snare. Yeah, that was not a good nair. <laughs> Do not think Mega's playing the hot. And Zane's so that was a pretty bad nair. Snare frame late, <laughs> and now Mega lifts. This, this is Mango definitely like, like, okay, this is the kind of thing, though, if you're a good player, if you're, like, like if you're Mango here, you do this nair, and this happens, 
where you do the snare and then you get grabbed by Marth. And if you're a Fox player, because you're always going to do some of these snares. No Fox, every Fox player has this snare in their bloodstream. This snare is coursing through your veins, okay? As a Fox player, this is, you're just, you're born to nair. As a Fox player, you're born to nair. That's just how it is, okay? Can't get it out of your system. Your job as a top Fox player is basically when you do this snare and you get grabbed by Marth, you need to realize like, ah, that's that nair. And you got to say to yourself, can't be doing that nair. And then you don't, and then you stop doing it for a while. Like, you're never going to get it out of your fucking system because it's just infected you if you're a Fox player. So the best you can hope to do is just realize when you do this there and the Marth grabs you and let it be like a shock to your system where it's like, ah, okay, yeah, sorry, didn't mean to, sorry, sorry, boss, sorry, boss, we'll let it happen again kind of thing. You know what I mean? Stock. This is the like. I mean, he got there a frame late and now Mango lifts and Mango's probably going to take the stock. (laughs) Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, you know, it happens. It's fine. It happens to the best of us. Worst snare of all. But I mean, yeah, we all want to do that nair. Every Fox player wants to do that nair. It, it, it is actually, I actually think this is the, like the, this the hardest thing about the matchup. It's not the, the punish game. It's not the, uh, the fact that Marth can smash out of your uppers. It's literally the fact that as a Fox player, you're born to nair and Marth players are born to grab. I think that's literally the hardest thing about the matchup. When you're born to nair and Marth players are born to grab, well, guess what? Grab wins. <laughs> and that's, that's the fucking problem with the matchup, all right? But looking like this game wants a wash. Yeah, this game one's game one's going going a little uh, south. Amazing air timing. Mango that nair was yeah, perfect. This nair, yeah. See, this is the nair you want to do. Nair this is what I mean when I say you're bored nair. Because you remember as a fox player, you remember these nairs. Perfect. You remember those nairs, and you think to yourself, they could all be like that. All my nairs could be that nair. This nair is fucking primo, dude. Look at this nair. Huh? Look at that nair. Martha's literally still in end lag, I think. He hasn't even come out of his L cancel. Oh, that's a true whiff punish. He raw naired the landing of forward. You know how fucking hard that is to do? I might. I, I don't think I've ever done that. That is fucking ridiculous. He, he's still in LK. He's still fucking getting up from his forward air. That's crazy. Perfect. Perfect. I want people to watch Melee and say to themselves, like, I can do better. You know what I mean? Like, I think, I think, I think Melee is so fucking deep. And, and that's the thing that's so cool about this is like, nobody is close to being perfect in Melee. And Mango's just a fucking crazy fucking player. And Zane is a crazy fucking player. But yeah, you could go back. I have no doubt that like, you, you know, that's what I think is actually really fucking cool about Melee is that like, you can be a nobody but you could bring your little thing to the table that you're better than everyone in the world at. You know what I mean? You could be Squid the Cat. And, you know, Squid the Cat's not top top 64 in majors. But Squid the Cat has the sickest Falcon movement in these very specific situations that nobody else can do. You know what I mean? And I think, like, I want more people to, like... I want the takeaway for people to be, like, not that, wow, these players are so godlike. There's no way I'm ever going to be able to be on their level. There's no way I'm ever going to be able to hold a candle to them. I'm just going to... Uh, you know, um, like talk about how sick I think they are all day. Well, I, I want the, I want people to do that too. Don't get me wrong, but uh, like I want people to come out of you know sessions like this and be like, damn, dude, there's there's like there's stuff that the top like the best players in the world today aren't doing that like I could learn and I could do and 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 there's you know there's all kinds of examples of this, right? Um, where there's players who are the best at some specific thing. And in Melee, there's so many different things you can learn how to do that you can literally become the, the master of a very specific interaction. And you can use that and you can extrapolate that and expand on that. And, you know, you look at KJH, who was incredibly technical for for years, honestly, before before he became like a top 20 player. And, um, yeah, I, I, I just want people to kind of feel that way. I want people to feel like, uh, uh, and that's why, that's why I think it's cool. You know, drug Fox comes out, you know, drug Fox does this analysis and, and I'm doing this analysis and I'm pointing out these mistakes that these players are making. And of course, these are players that would triple three stock me, right? Like in the heat of the moment, of course, <laughs> it's way better than me. Mango's way better than me. They, they would, they would, they would beat my ass. But 
I think that's why Melee is so cool is that like, yeah, there are these situations that come up where it's like, damn, like you, you can really see like, yeah, it's, this game's been out for 20 years, but I think people are still going to be better in 2022 and people are still going to be better in 2023. And I don't think that happens in other esports. You don't have these games where the game's been out for 20 years and people are getting better and better and better and better and more polished and more refined. And I think in Melee, it's literally going to happen. I think Mango, a year from now, two years from now, so is doing this crush cancel. You can, if possible. Right? Of course he's picking FD to maximize his... I, 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 think, I think the top Foxes, I think Mango's literally doing this a year from now. 100%. So... I, I, I just look at this as like, I think it's cool to talk about like areas where even today's top players are messing up because like that's a sign that our game is continue, is going to continue to get richer and deeper and more, you know, pushed to its limit, right? Mango definitely should have gone for up air, but... What did he say that the Foxes feels, aren't doing? Goes, and, th and this is kind of the aggression I was talking about. Like here, Mango just runs all the The aggression. The yeah, okay. So so where I'm at on Mango versus... Mango's Fox versus Marth, I think ultimately... And this is something Zane talks about a lot because I've talked to Zane at length about Marth Fox and Fox Marth. Um, I think that like... Not even I think. This is what Zane's told me. Basically, like Zane says like, okay, nobody pressures me in neutral like Mango. Mango basically is the only fox that like actually fucking tries to like really tries to get in my space and like really tries to encroach on my space and forces me to make these decisions on defense. And like that's ultimately the the, the takeaway I think for me as a fox player for this set and if you're looking at Fox Marth and what I think about Fox Marth is the macro like, yeah, there's some situations, there's some micro situations. And when I say micro versus macro, I say micro is basically like, micro is, um, is every other fox scared of Zane? Now, let me ask that in a second. Scared's only half the picture. There's some situations in micro where Mago made outstanding decisions. Like uh, that edge guard, remember, where it was, it was game five of the first set on FD. And he did that really quick roll the ledge, got the Marth Killer light shield up. Zane didn't even realize what was happening. Side build shield immediately got shined. That shit, I was like, Okay, that that was an incredible like, dude. Nobody's doing that. I, I don't even know how Mango thought of that because I don't usually even see Mango go for that edge guard. So that that shit came out of nowhere. That was incredible. Really good presence of mind. But I would say like overall, what's really impressing me for Mango's Fox is the macro. I think it's that he's actually running up. He's first of all, he's he's doing true whiff punishes or he's threatening true whiff punishes, which is huge. He's actually what he's doing is he's okay. So it's like basically like this, right, Zayn. Dash dancing, Mango dash, Mango gets into dash, uh, like, like, like dash dance range, and Zane goes for, like, you know, he short hops, and Mango dash dances outside of forward air range, and Zane realizes, like, okay, Mango could true whiff punish this, so I need to be really careful here. Zane knows Mango's gonna go for, like, usually whiff punish short hop aerials, so usually Zane's doing, like, landing forward air, and then he'll either do, like, dash back shield? He basically, like, is actually being put in these positions where Mango's threatening at him when he's coming out with the forwarder. Most foxes, I think, want really, like... It's been a while since I've seen a good, like, Leffen Zane or IBDW Zane set, so it's hard to compare the, the contemporaries of Mango at this point. But what I see most foxes do is they do a lot of positioning in front of the Marth, Right? So Mango's actually threatening to go behind the Marth. Mango's making his effective range like actually into Marth's zone. Most foxes are waiting in front of the Marth and they're trying to get Marth to commit to something big and they're only looking for true whiff punishes. Mango knows that sometimes he's going to do these short up aerials in that aren't true whiff punishes, but like he's doing those downers in like Zane lands with the forward air and then Mango does short hop downer in. And sometimes it's not a direct punish on the landing leg, but he's catching Zane dashing back or dashing forward out of the landing of his forward air. So, in other words, Mango's down to, like, say, okay, I don't need, like, a guaranteed punish on your la on, on your forward air or something like that, but I know that in the moment you've landed from your forward air, you've got to make a call. You're either going to down tilt, you're going to dash forward, you might dash, uh, sorry, you're going to down tilt, you're going to dash back, you might dash forward, and you might shield. And I know you don't want to shield, but I'm going to push you to the corner and I'm going to be dash dance in a way that I know I can react to you if you try to swing. So Zane, Zane himself, Mango knows that Zane doesn't want to come forward. Like against a player like Mewtwo King, Mewtwo King is the kind of player who, and this is, keep in mind guys, these are very like kind of, these are generalizations I would say, but 
in general, I would say Zayn is not the kind of Marth that wants to come forward and do like a big swing. He doesn't want to come forward and do like a big forward smash, catching Mango in his dash answer, or a big dash tech, because he knows those are risky. And he knows Mango's playing sharp enough that he's going to be looking for those. And he knows, and Mango, on the other hand, knows that Zayn doesn't like to do those options, because Mango knows that they are scary for Marth to go for. Zayn wants to play very stable, very solid. He wants to kind of keep the opponent out. And Zayn's not the kind of guy that comes forward and is going to swing for the fences the way like Mewtwo King might. So... Mango's like, okay, well, I'm going to slowly take stage for you, and eventually you're going to have to make a call. You're going to do a short up aerial, and then I'm going to pressure you when you land from that aerial. I know I might not get a guaranteed follow-up, but I'm going to put you in a situation where you might have to put your shield up. And when you put your shield up, Mars at a disadvantage. I also do know the other Foxes have some pretty bad habits. So Zayn, I know, and I think he's told Cody this too. Cody has this thing where when Cody like whiffs things in front of Zayn, he has this... He, he often goes for a spot dodge. So Cody will do like these. So you, we saw earlier in the set, Mango will do these undershoot aerials. And a lot of the time, out of the undershoot aerial, Mango undershoots it far enough that he'll do undershoot aerial and then he'll like dash back. Cody, a lot of the time, from what I've seen and what I've heard from Zayn, he goes for a lot of spot dodges. And I think the spot dodges are no, like no bueno. I think a really crucial aspect of this matchup, Fox Marth, this is actually like a little thing I tell myself sometimes when I'm fighting Marths, uh, is... I think for Fox in the Marth matchup, this is like, how do I put this? This is almost like, it's almost like a slogan I have in the, in the, in the Marth matchup. In the Marth matchup as Fox, I have, I have, a, I have like a, it's like a commandment. And my commandment is don't go into lag in front of the Marth. Mantra. Mantra is the word. Yeah, that's my mantra. Don't go into lag in front of the Marth. So that would be, what's an example of that? Doing a, a nair that they can whip punish. Spot dodging. Spot dodging is big. They will sniff that out. And it's funny because Zane was telling me he was in a rotation or he was playing like it was at Mango's house when he went to Mango's house. And, and Zane was saying it was tripping him up because he was playing Cody and Cody would keep doing these spot dodges and he was punching for these spot dodges. And then he played Mango and Mango never spot dodges out of the nair. So Mango do undershoot nair, but then undershoot nair dash back, right? And it was funny because Zane was basically saying like he was going back and forth playing Cody and Mango and he was like, dude. This is tripping me up, like, because then I play Cody, and I'm looking for these spot dodges, then I go play Mango, and he doesn't do any of those spot dodges, and then vice versa. And this is the sort of thing where, like, this is why I say it's it's hard to say that a matchup is truly solved, because, like, just the smallest thing, like, what you do after your undershoot and air can completely change how a lot of these interactions go, you know what I'm saying? Goes for the grab anyway. But that's what I mean by macro. Mango will actually do things like undershoot and air, and, like, have a solid game plan out of it. Like, I'm going to undershoot Nair, dash back, and, like, go back to neutral. He's not, like, banking on Zayn, like, missing the timing on a spot dodge or, like, not reacting to a spot dodge or something like that. Not reacting is the wrong word. But, like, yeah, Mango's basically, he's undershooting Nairs in a way that is making Zayn scared to go for raw grabs. He's staying at a dash down spacing where he can force Zayn into the air, and then he's doing a really good job pressuring the Marth when Marth lands from the forward air. And that's what I would say are the big macro things that Mango's doing really well in this set. And Mango yeah, undershoot, dash back, and run and shine. Ex no, exactly, 100%. Mango Play does that kind of thing all the time. Or it'll do undershoot and then dash in, short up, drill. Same concept. It all comes back, guys, it all comes back to the mental stack. You know what the mental stack is, right? The mental stack is like the set of things the opponent's looking at or looking to respond to uh, during, during a game. And uh, who's who's talking about the mental state? Was it Sage Amp? Sage Amp talks about it all the time. But the idea is that, like, in, in any fighting game, how often is it the opponent hits you with something and you say to yourself, oh, I'm not going to get hit by that again. The mental stack is that you have a stack of things you care about that you're that you're looking for that your opponent's doing in your head, right? And you're, you're kind of looking for certain options from your opponent and you're looking to respond to those and react to those. And when you... They call it like overloading the mental stack. When you put, you you hit people with things that look kind of silly sometimes because you threaten so many different things that they're not able to react to what you're doing. So um, this is kind of how a lot of mix-ups that are partially reaction-based in fighting games work is that you, it's kind of like the overshoot undershoot thing I was talking about. Like, yeah, technically you can thread the needle, can kind of re react to all those different spacings that the fox is threatening, but you are basically, uh, what's up, Ginger? I always use driving example. You can probably drive and eat a burger at the same time. But you can't play melee and eat a burger at the same time because your controller would get greasy. Wait, finish your analogy. I'm actually really curious. 
Can you drive Nita Burger and change the music and have a conversation and check your blind spot and three other things? Yeah, you're right, right, exactly. Yeah, that's a good, yeah, right. So, Drunk Fox talking about like when Mango makes these plays, it's like he, there's all, this happens all the time. You're playing a fucking fighting game, you're playing Smash, and you get hit by something, you get hit by, I don't know, side B recover or something, you go, oh, I'm not letting that happen again. I'm gonna be ready the next time. But as soon as you say, I'm gonna be ready to that thing the next time, if they do something different, you're gonna be that much less likely to react to that thing they do. And if there's six or seven different things they can do, if you're trying to pay equal attention to all of those things, it is going to make your reaction time that much slower. It's very easy to react to something in a fighting game when you're only looking for one thing, if you know what they're going to do, right? And I think what's going on with these edge guard situations where Mango is, uh, or, or, or sharking situations where Mango's going up there with an up air and people like kind of get hit, even though they have their double jump, it's like, Why'd they get hit by a double jump, like a, or a double, like an upper? They had their double jump. They could have double jumped out. And the reality is, it's just not on their brain at all. And by adding things to the opponent's mental stack, they're more likely to miss other things you could go for. So it just turns into this kind of battle of adaptation. Oh, what a oh oh, oh early up on the second one. <laughs> I would have yellow dash attacked if I was Zane. Maybe that's cheesy, but like I know Mega's looking for. Dude, this, Zane like, hates. I actually, dude, I kind of wish Zane would dash attack more. And like run up forward, forward smash more. I wish he would. Zane hates going for those options. Zane hates YOLO dash hacking and YOLO forward smashing, but I think you got to do it sometimes, man. I don't know. Dash killer like a Nair. So you can just wake up and with a dash tag. Zane hates it. You win the game. He back. hates dash tagging. Yeah, see, I knew my... Mango does watch for it. To be fair, Mango does watch for it pretty well. Didn't you he see does. That? I knew no, he, he was does. looking for up smash even before I said it. And he just goes for it randomly. So it's super obvious that Mango's going for that, like from the moment I... But you'll also kind of never know, because Zane hasn't gone for those options once this whole set. In fact, both of these sets. He calls that the MTK? I know. I know. But dude, I think if you if you literally never go for it... I don't know. Uh... Mix up at the end. Class and... I think yeah. it has a place for sure. You know, it's kind of like, it's your oh overshoot. As Marth, it's your overshoot. It's what you... Oh, if you want to overshoot, it's your overshoot. If your opponent's dash dancing you out... Oh my god, crazy. Mango, I think if like, nothing else, enforcing it as something they have to pay attention to and adding it to their mental stack will, will make it harder for them to scout out other things. Went really I think. So he doesn't get the punish, which he could have gotten, but I honestly still like that by Mango. Yeah, he just wants to stay safe. And again, another mix-up. Melee is so crazy. Look at this. So He'd rather do low baron and, and not give Zane, Zane a, a so shield grab opportunity. Through, realizes Zane didn't shield grab, puts his shield up instead, Waits to see if Zane dares out of shield or bears out of shield, and then on a slight delay timing, he's like, "Oh, you didn't dare yet. Now I'm gonna nair." And this is how a lot of fighting games work at high level. It's these very fast transitions from mix up to mix up. So it's like one mix up, two mix ups, three mix ups, four. Mix -ups. This is so and sick. That happened all in quick succession, and Mango has it all like pre-programmed pretty much. He's like, "This." That was so sick. Is, that was such a sick Mango sequence. Holy fuck, dude! Nine times out of ten, because this is just what. He that was does. such a sick sequence. It, it's pretty good. Too, Zane was pretty nuts to fight, fully cracked this momentum. Too, because it accounts. This set was, I mean, dude, this set was, it was, it was all grit. That's what Zane said. He was like, "Dude, this that grand finals was all grit. It wasn't polish. It was grit." And uh, yeah, I just, it's just this, this grand finals was two two fucking warriors in the trenches, just like just slugging it out, and one of them came out on top. And you know, this is something I said earlier before the raid. People were saying like, um, "Do you think Zane cracked under the pressure?" And I was like, "Yeah, I mean, he he did. I, he made a lot of you know kind of errors that I think maybe ordinarily wouldn't make. But it's not it's not just that Zane cracked under the pressure and Mango was was impervious to the pressure. I think the pressure got to both of them. You, there were spots where Mango too was playing a little, you know, it got messy. Mango was also in some spots, you know, not doing the perfect thing or these weird double jumps would come out. Um, but I think he just buckled down and the experience carried him through just a little bit better. I think they were both, I think the pressure was affecting both of them for sure. It was just a, it just, I mean, it was just a, a slobber knocker of a set, honestly. Gets him, calls it out. Yeah, again, Mango off and high of these there. Okay, we God. got a stock. 25,000. You guys ever play a stock for $25,000? dollars pause it on this. Live reaction. Great crouch. Oh my god. Hold up. Great crouch. Cancel Fucking. I love it. Twenty five thousand oh, dollars. Please hold up. don't ever let me play a twenty five thousand dollars. Great stock. crouch. Cancel my man. I will I side be it. off the stage. Oh, this could be it. Oh, he misses his dash back. <laughs> okay, Zane. Imagine missing it. Almost missing it. That could be a twenty five thousand dollar dash back. Okay, he has the combo. This could be it. Oh, he's oh, he misses the protectors. He's slow. How did he miss that?
Okay, he has the combo. This could be it. Oh, he's slow on the combo. Double jumps. Okay, he, he has burns the combo. his double jump. Where oh, did he die? It's crazy that he dies there. Insane that okay, he died he here. He has the combo. This could be it. Oh, he's slow. He double jumps right here. It almost looks like he's getting backward from the ground, but he's actually in the air. One frame late. Oh, on the combo. Double jumps. No fucking way. Okay, he no has the combo. Way. You know what they say. If you're not frame perfect, 99% of the time, then you're not good enough. How does the saying go? If you're not frame perfect, 100% of the time, 99% of the time, then you're going to be a frame late every time. So my takeaways, uh, my takeaways, okay, so, you know, the big questions. Okay, do, do I think Fox beats Marth? Ultimately, no, I don't think Fox beats Marth. However, I do think that, you know, the, I think, I think Marth wins, my, my opinion hasn't really changed the mat, the matchup. I think Marth wins slightly, real slightly. I think, I've, I've kind of always thought it was like five, five, four, five ish, you know? Um, what I really liked out of Mango's neutral was like, okay, so a couple things. Uh, Mango's spacing, really, really good. And what I mean by that is he's dash dancing at a range where, he can react. Zayn went for very few dash attacks. Very few. Like two, I think, in the whole grand finals. And I think Mango shielded uh, dash dance one and shielded the other one. So even though Zayn only went for two dash attacks in 10 games, neither one worked. So Mango's playing a range where he can still react to dash attack, but he's close enough that when Zayn has to jump into the air, which he inevitably eventually is going to have to jump because Mango's taking stage from him and he can't just dash dance forever. Zayn jumps, and a lot of the time... Mango almost never goes for... In fact, I don't think once he, he went for a true whiff punish grab. Usually he does whiff punish aerial, which I really like because it's a little bit less risky. It can catch the Marth coming forward if you do dash dance drill. And I would actually say to Zane coming out of it, Mango never went for dash... Zane would frequently do like forward down tilt, which Mango would punish with the drill. I would say to Zane, probably don't even do fair down tilt because like Mango's not doing whiff punish grab. So you don't need to do down tilt. You're not catching anything. In fact, you're getting punished... Almost every time you go for that because Mango's going for drill. A lot of the time, Mango would also just take that opportunity to... He would uh, run in. Man Zane lands with the forwarder. Mango runs in. And then, basically, Zane realizes he has to put his shield up because Mango's going to go for running shine or something. Mango turns this into full hop pressure. So he's keeping his pressure when Zane whiffs an aerial in a way that isn't heavily committal. He's not like, oh, I'm going to grab you out of your aerial. I'm not gonna risk, you know, because it's a very tight timing to get a true whip punish grab on Mars Ford or his Nair, but Mango's using that opportunity to keep pressure. So he's playing very patient in the sense that he's not, he's not blowing his load, okay? He's not like, he doesn't feel like he needs to turn the smallest opening into like a big punish. Mango's down to just sit on the pressure and let it simmer and let it simmer until the opponent kind of hangs himself. On Zane's end, I also thought Zane, for, for his end, did a really good job um, with Overall, his neutral. I thought this set was was great. De definitely, like, uh, it was funny because Zane would... Total opposite from what you'd expect from Zane a couple years ago. If anything, he dropped a lot of punishes, but his neutral was very, very solid. Um, didn't give Mango many dash stacks to work with. Did a pretty good job playing out of those situations. Even when Mango put him in those pressure situations, Zane usually did a pretty good job getting out. Um, edge guarding consistently really solid from Mango, which I think it has to be in Fox Marth. Uh, I've always had a lot of thoughts on Fox Marth. I was playing IBW in reverse mains to warm him up for the reverse mains show match. And I kept edge guarding IBW's Marth with my getup attack flowchart from the ledge. And uh, he said something to the effect of like, huh, how come I don't do this? Or he was like, "There's no, he said, there's got to be a reason I don't do this when I was doing the, the getup attack. And I mean, the reality is there's a lot of flowcharts that kind of work against Marth. Um, Mango, this one opts for just really late rolls, which I think is really good. Um... This somehow became the topic of the week on Twitter the other day. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Mango is consistently able to turn those situations into at least like 50% edge guard success rate. Uh, thoughts on Mango's zero ledge ashes in grand finals? Apparently he was, yeah, apparently he said he was missing it all day, so he just didn't want to go for it. But like, you know, I mean, Mango ledge dashes when he knows he'll hit it. Like, I think this is something, well, honestly, a lot of Fox players do. Like, you go for ledge dashes when you're confident that you have the execution to hit them. And I think that, um, yeah, if Mango thought he was going to miss them, he's not going to take that risk. It doesn't make any